Hey, everybody. What's going on? It's Angelique. I am so happy every week. Y'all know that. I am happy to be here. I spend a lot of time getting ready for these episodes. So welcome to Silent No More. I have a special guest today. I'm going to save her for a little bit later, but we're going to get into our typical conversation. So my first thing is to say welcome. Hello to all of my courageous kings, to all of my courageous queens. Welcome to this episode of my weekly domestic violence awareness podcast called Silent No More. Because me, many other people, we are silent no more because we realize that we can't be. There is way too much stuff going on. There's way too many things happening in involving domestic violence and the pain and the struggles that people are going through trying to get out. And some of them, as you know, never even make it out. So when I do this podcast weekly, it is for a specific reason. We have to make sure this message gets out. And so I'm here to talk to you, to hope that you will listen. And today I don't have to do it by myself. I got somebody with me. I can't wait to bring her on. (laughs) I am so excited. All right. So I'm Angelique Pierce. After all, I can say my name, right? I'm Angelique Pierce. You guys know me. I'm a survivor of domestic violence. I am an advocate of freedom and truth. And I am also the founder of Ladder Masters Inspirational Leadership Group. Most of you know it as Ladder Masters or Ladder Masters Group. And you guys know I created it for three purposes and three purposes only. And I'm gonna tell you what they are. Number one is to bring awareness. In this case, it's about domestic violence. I have got to, that's me hitting the table, you can hear it. I have got to make sure that people really understand what it is and what it's not. Because there's a lot of myths out there. People think they understand why it happens or why women or men don't get out. They think they know, but they don't. So my first goal is to bring awareness. My second goal is to break down facades. That is a must for me. All of the things that we think are happening, all the things we understand to be going on are not necessarily the truth. The things that abusers are doing to trap women, to trap men, Half of us don't even understand the game. I got it. And that's why I share it. And the last thing is to build conquerors. After all the mess, after all the pain, after all the drama, how do I help make sure that each person comes out victorious and rises to their highest height? That's what I'm here to do. I speak for three reasons. And if I'm ever not speaking for those three reasons, I always tell y'all, y'all can do what? Tell me to shut up if I'm ever not speaking for those three reasons. But hey, I'm talking. We got a few minutes before the show actually starts. If you could do me a favor, somewhere on your screen is a share button. Share this episode, share this live recording, because I want to make sure that I don't care if you share it to another group, to your own page. I don't care if you tag someone, a man, a woman, an animal, a child. I don't care who it is. Tag somebody, share this because we gotta make sure to do it right now, literally right now, go somewhere, send me a comment and tell me that you did it. I'd appreciate you for doing that. Go ahead and tell, oh, I got a comment already. First thing first, that's my girl, Chantel. So we're about to get started. Hey, Chantel, good to see you. Thank you, unique blessings. I'm gonna shout y'all out in just a second. But again, today I have a special guest. I have a special guest with me. She is a survivor. She is a speaker. She's an entrepreneur. She's an advocate. The woman of the hour. (laughs) Look, I can see her. Y'all can't see her yet. And I can see that she's smiling right now. I can see her. Miss Hannah Kay. All right. Now, listen, I just want to give y'all a peek of this woman. She's great. I cannot wait to do this interview because the story is powerful. And not just the story, but what Hannah Kay is doing today is phenomenal. So I'm coming right back to you in two seconds, my love, okay? Be right back. All right. So again, welcome to the podcast. It's silent no more. If you haven't shared it yet, yes, thank you, Unique Blessing, shared it. Um, Make sure you are sharing this podcast to whoever. I'm sure you guys are a part of Facebook groups. Listen, I don't care what walk of life people are from. This thing called domestic violence affects every culture, no matter what the age group. I don't care how many degrees you have. People have been affected by domestic violence. It is not a respecter of person. So let's just be clear. If you haven't, make sure you share that. Can't wait till we keep going. All right. So I'm going to keep it moving. 
before I go any further, you guys know I say a quick prayer and I'm going to uh, bring actually bring Hannah K back on just for a second while I say this prayer. But I'm going to say a quick prayer because to me, it's important that I, I start this podcast out on the right note, that I make sure that I've invited God into this moment to make sure that we are speaking the right things and sharing the message that needs to be heard. So I'm going to quickly ask you, everyone, just bow your heads quickly. God, we come before you right now just asking you to enter into this place with us. We thank you right now that it is your voice through me that everyone's hearing, through Hannah K that everyone's hearing. God, we want to do nothing but honor you. And we want to do nothing but help survivors and victims of domestic violence. And if we could have it our way, I don't even have to ask Hannah K. If we could have it our way, this would be no more. We would bring an end to all of it. So we ask you right now to guide our words, guide our hearts, guide our thinking and the messages that come through, whether it's for people who are actually listening right now or for those who will hear the, rec hear the recording later. And right now, I want to speak to every survivor, every victim, and even those who are in it right now. I pray how we pray for the courage for them to get out and the strength for them to stay out. I thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So I want to do some quick acknowledgments. Hannah K, I'll be right back. Do some quick acknowledgments. Y'all guys know this podcast is made possible by the UB Podcast Network. UB as in unique blessings. It's a nonprofit organization. It's founded by and run by none other than Miss Queen Unique, Miss Chantel Evans, who I know is watching because she's such an awesome supporter and an awesome sister and truly a queen when we say queen. So I am grateful for, for her passion, for her drive, and for her being a part of my life. All right. So <clears throat> this lady that I've been telling y'all about that's the guest on my show tonight. <laughs> I'm finally at this point where I can really, really bring her on. But first, have you shared it? Are you on? Now, I know Unique Blessing shared it. If you are on and you have not yet shared this, share it because there are people who need to come on and listen right now who might think, well, I'm over here busy doing this thing right now. Uh-uh. Let's get going. All right. So Hannah K, let's do it, Miss Lady. Here we go. All right. So, hey, hey, hi. Hi, everybody, Hannah Kay. <laughs> All right, so listen, I've got this really nice bio right on you. I'm going to read it because it deserves to be read because you are a phenomenal, phenomenal person. And then after that, I'm going to talk about how we met. <laughs> yes. Yes, because that's awesome. All right, so let me do the official read. Okay, y'all ready? So, Hannah Kay Herlinger has been living her passion throughout her life connecting with and helping others. Her career has taken her across many industries, starting with serving in the United States Senate for Senate Mark Pryor. She was then recruited, y'all hear me? Cause she's phenomenal. People get recruited when they know you're phenomenal. She was then recruited to join Facebook as a founding member of the Washington DC political office. Remember Sheryl Sandberg? Y'all know who Sheryl Sandberg is. Sheryl Sandberg connected with Hannah Kay during the period of time of the writing and the publication of her book, Lean In. I know you guys know that book, Women, Work, and the Will to Lead, which provided international exposure to the nonprofit Lean In, created to empower all women to achieve their ambitions. Hannah Kay, are y'all listening? Wait a minute. Hannah Kay became the head of operations for the entire organization. Wait a minute. <laughs> Y'all ain't hear me yet. She then found herself connected to the Hillary Clinton for American presidential campaign and took time to be on the advance team. Hannah Kay was born with the purpose of living her life to connect with others. This is a fact. Her passion to help others build confidence in themselves is what fueled the creation of her company, Thread Talk. And it is a company with the purpose of supporting domestic violence survivors. And I won't tell any more than that because I want to give you a chance to tell more of that stuff. So Hannah Kay, hey girl. Hello, Angelique. It's so great to be with you. I'm so, so excited. Thank you so oh much for having me. I know. So Hannah Kay, I want you to just say a few things about yourself, right? Like, oh, Sophie, thank you. That was Sophie. She's got a great Facebook page where she is committed to putting things out daily, whether it's prayers, whether it's live, whether it's whatever, and it's specifically for violence survivors, and it's a nice Facebook group. So, I love it. Who, yes, love it. So, Hannah Kay, who's Hannah Kay? Tell us who you are. Just no. a little bit, not, not the Hannah professional Kay. side, just Hannah the who you are. 
Yes. Wait, wait, hold yes. on, hold on. Wait a minute, let me see. Let me make sure I'm drinking my cup the right way. Oh, yes, yes, I'll, I'll share it with you here too with our little <laughs> thread talk. Oh, that's so connected, you know, and that is, that is so true. And for those um, who can see it says, you are strong, you are loved, you are not alone. And this is our thread talk mug. And that, that is me is letting people know just that. That is what I strive to do every day now is to let people know they are loved, they are strong, they are yep. not alone and that we are connected. We yep. truly are connected. And even our story of meeting each other, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we are just so truly connected. Um, and so, you know, that's that's who I believe that I am. I am yep. a connector and also, um, you know, just here living my life now in a place where I wasn't sure I would ever be. And I know we'll talk about that in a little bit oh, yes. more, but now I live each day. I'm so grateful. I am I love life. I'm so excited to be here. Um, <laughs> so listen, anyway. so so where were you born, Hannah Kay? Where were you, where are you from? I am originally from Arkansas. <laughs> so originally from Arkansas. Um, Over here to Carolinas, how'd that happen? <laughs> yes, you know, I mean, roundabout, let me tell you. So well, I'm that's the part we're gonna get to, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that is some parts we're gonna get to. We may wanna save that for part of the story, but yes. And you know what, to be honest, I picked Charlotte out of a hat. I, it, I just kind of, it seemed like the great place to come. And I'm yep. so happy here in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is truly home now. So I I'm love it. Here. So I got to tell you guys, so this is how we met. So back in, was it October, 2019, right? 2019. 2019. Yes. So Hannah Kay and I met in Charlotte. We were, uh, well, actually I was invited. She was already going to be there, but I was invited shortly before to attend this meeting. So you know how every county has commissioners. So the Board of County Commissioners in Mecklenburg County of Charlotte, North Carolina, they hold these meetings. And in particular, there was a meeting that Hannah Kay was leading because she went to push this particular topic. And guess what it was? It was her pushing the concept that she felt that the Board of County Commissioners should vote to bring in Domestic Violence Survivors Day. So make a proclamation to have Domestic Violence Survivors Day. So I kind of showed up in the West, but like I came from the West Wing, right? You had done all the work, right? And no, like, sister, Where are you from there. There? <laughs> no, you you are one of the Yeah, but they voted unanimously. It's a piece of legislation. It's a it's an argument that you brought forth to say we need to have this to recognize survivors of domestic violence. And it's not just the fact that we survive domestic violence, it's the work that we are doing to advocate for awareness and to help other survivors as well. And I think that's really important because there, there's a reason to celebrate a survivor. So blessings to you because you stood, she did all the speaking y'all, I ain't taking no credit. <laughs> look, look, I was in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> and you let me I have to say this, Angelique, because you are one of the amazing, powerful men and women who we wanted to bring this forward for. Yeah. And it really is also for us, but also for those who may currently be in a situation. And by looking at those of us who are survivors, look at us and say, I can, I can survive too. Exactly. Um, and so I was so excited to have you by my side that day um, and grateful for many more years to come. But, but real quick, this was the best part. So after all the conversation and after the vote took place and they officially brought it, it was really a nice thing where we went around and we shook all their hands. It was really nice. I remember all that, but this is where I knew I liked Hannah Kay. So we get out <laughs> in the hall, <laughs> we get out in the hallway and you know, we just got all these feelings and then of course we're all emotional, right? This whole thing just happened, this proclamation just got passed. And we're in the hallway talking about, you know what? It's so ridiculous that we even have to be survivors. You know what? I should be able to pull up a, a name of a guy that I met and I should be able to look up like boop, 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 boop. Oh, he got a protection order against him. Deuces, like I'm never doing that. <laughs> we're in the hallway having this conversation about that there should be a registry or a national list or a national database that we should be able to go to and type in somebody's name and be able to protect ourselves in advance because we shouldn't have to be survivors, right? We shouldn't have to be. So we had an amazing conversation in the hallway that day, y'all. And did. I was like, this woman's real. 
Like she knows what I'm talking about. I know what she's talking about. So, so. yes, and I will forever treasure our moment in the hall too, because we had just passed Survivor's Day. We're talking about this and just being able to be there and and also celebrate yes, each indeed. other while also thinking ahead for other people as well too. So Absolutely. Amazing. So now listen. This episode today is called, It's Time to Jump, Breaking Free from the Cycle of Abuse. So we're going to we're gonna get all into your, what they say, all up in your closet. We're going to talk about what, what happened, okay? But I want to really give a little bit of perspective as to why um, this, this particular series, I call the series, mm-hmm. is even called It's Time to Jump. So I'm going to read something. And Hannah Kay, I, I don't know if you know of this, but you may, because you've been around for a while doing domestic violence awareness. So I took a training through Mecklenburg County and it was in 2018. And it was for the sole purpose of becoming a domestic, part of the Domestic Violence Speakers Bureau. I can't remember if you're a part of the Speakers Bureau. I am. You are, so okay. So then you'll remember this. So both of us went through, look at this. (laughs) Connection. This is meant to be, you know? So what happened was one of the trainers there, her name is Rihanna. You know Rihanna, I know you gotta know Rihanna. Of course, love, love. So, So she told this story. And I'm going to tell, and every time I do this show, I tell it because I I feel like sometimes certain things have to be repeated for people to hold on to it. And I'm going to tell y'all right now, by the way, I told Hannah Kay this. I said, my show is typically an hour, but if we go on longer than an hour, whoever's going to stay is going to stay, right? We're going to talk this thing through and we're going to get this message out. So anyway, back to Rihanna. So she told this story and it stuck with me. So I'm going to share it with you guys. This is kind of a summary. She said, if you put a frog into boiling water, I mean, I mean, like suddenly put it into really, really hot water. It's going to jump out, right? Who's not going to jump out? It's going to jump out. But if you put the frog into lukewarm water and then you slowly, very slowly bring it to a boil over time, then the frog is not going to really notice the change in the temperature as it rises. So it doesn't really perceive the danger or the coming danger. Why? Because the frog's body temperature just keeps adjusting to each small, more subtle change, less noticeable increase in the temperature as it's going slowly from warm to hot. But at some point, at some point, the water will reach boiling point. If you didn't know, that's 212 degrees. Mm -hmm. Now, having spent all of its energy adjusting to the changes in temperature, adjusting to the danger, That frog is no longer going to have the energy to jump. So what's going to happen is going to get cooked to death. Like that frog, victims of domestic violence must jump before it's too late. So, Hannah Kay, you jumped. I jumped. Yes. Thank God you jumped. And it's your story of jumping that we're going to discuss today. Are you ready, my lady? I am ready. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. All right. So, guys, I have a series of questions for, for Hannah Kay. But I, I tell her, like I tell anybody, we're going to go where this thing goes. If you guys put in some questions that we want to answer more than the questions I have on my page, then that's where we go. We go where it takes us. All right. So, first things first. Many survivors are afraid and even ashamed to admit that they were a survivor of domestic violence. They don't even... They don't even want to say it. So why are you, Hannah Kay, why are you willing to be on this show and to tell uh, tell your story or talk about what you went through? Why do you do that? Yes, you know, and I was one of those survivors. I yeah. was afraid to come out and share my story. I, I, I was one of those. And I have to say that slowly and, you know, slowly I started telling little bits and pieces, um, but I still wasn't sure that I knew anyone personally who right. was affected by domestic violence in any way. And really it all boils down to this is why I share my story too. So um, as you mentioned, I did work for Sheryl Sandberg too. And one day, um, you know, I kind of slowly started telling some people about my story. And one day we were in a room and she had asked my permission beforehand and she didn't tell my story, but she mentioned, sort of highlighted it a little bit. And we were in a room full of women. I will tell you, it was that moment after sort of the event 
I had so many women come up to me in that room that I had no clue. And they told me, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Like, I too, I actually had one person in that room who said, I am currently in an abusive relationship and I am going home and doing something about it. Chills. Like, Chills. I knew at that moment that I wanted to start sharing my story because if I could be that person for other people yes. and encourage other people to share, it could absolutely change so many lives. Oh my God. And now mind you, I'm going to assume that the caliber of women you were around were, you know, us or higher, right? Like in, in corporate America, right? These are women who are- Corporate America, yes. Functioning, right. And so just a real quick point, because Hannah Kay and I talked about this, that there are so many people like us, right? And, and listen, we're not better than anybody. We're just our own whatever. But in our case, we're the educated, done all these things, traveled to these places, made this kind of money, read these types of books and entertained these kinds of people. Right. So we're, we're those people. And a lot of times everyone thinks, oh, no, you know, they, they those kind of they don't go through that. They're powerful. They're too smart. They're too whatever. Let me tell you something. It has nothing to do with that. I don't care about the. I care about my degrees. Don't, let me let me say I care about them because I work <laughs> for them. Let me let me say that I care about the money because I work for it. Right. But what I'm saying is it crosses all lines. I don't care if you're in, like, you know, I work for Daimler, you work, you, I mean, I'm not, I can't remember where you work for right now. Right now for Thread Talk, my well, okay. Thread Talk. Yeah, just for Thread Talk completely. Okay, so just 100%? Yes. I missed that. Anjali, get together, girl, know your guest. So, but like people are, they make these assumptions that domestic violence victims are a certain type of person and you can't be any more incorrect. You can't say it's just certain people of a certain socioeconomic status, people of a certain education level, only people that live in the hood. No, it's not just that. We're not those women and we experienced it. And there are very specific reasons why it happened. And we get it now more than ever. So we are speaking on behalf of this segment of women and also on behalf of the women who aren't in our segment, but bringing light to it happens to us too. And we don't need to be any more ashamed that we're supposed to be this or that, but somehow we ended up in these situations. Forget all that. Now we're on the other side. Now we're telling our stories. Now we're making it happen. Now we're bringing the message because people need to hear it. They need to hear it. All right, I said a lot, sorry. Okay. <laughs> no. so. The main point right there is domestic violence does not discriminate, does not period. Discriminate. Yep. It, like, to everyone, so. It doesn't, it doesn't. So, all right, here we go. Ah, look at this. I felt I was too educated to be in that domestic violence group. So I disconnected myself. Mm. Yes. I totally yes. get I feel that. that. <laughs> yes. So, so I, I always tell this about myself. Like I was working for a dime lover, right? And I always felt like if anyone knew that I was standing here in this meeting and telling you what your task is and making sure you're doing your project work, running this meeting, doing this and doing that. And then if they knew I was going home, <clears throat> I was going home and being powerless. So the power I was displaying in the boardroom, but I was going home and being powerless. And I told you this, Hannah case, sitting in my garage, contemplating for 10 minutes. All right, if I go in, what's going to happen now? Okay. Mm -hmm. Powerless. Mm -hmm. I thought if anybody knew that I was living this double life, that I would lose all respect. My personal brand at work will be destroyed. I can't let anybody know. But you know what? Forget that. That's not the word I wanted to say. <laughs> Forget that. <laughs> Forget that. So, uh, <laughs> okay, I want you to read that. Read that quote. That comment. Oh, this, okay. this is this is a fact. I am okay. so proud of you, April. Oh my God, I'm so wow. proud of her right now. Yes, wow. we were married to the same guy. Wow. No lie. No mm. lie. So you want to talk about a registry? And why there should be a registry or why there should be a list, the two of us shouldn't have had that experience. Wow. Do you wow. understand me? Mm -hmm. I love you right now, April. Oh my God, girl, I love you right now for that. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> woo, look at that. I used to stay, wow. stay up. Yes. All right, see, it's a lot. Same things, just to avoid going home. All right, mm -hmm. so now I'm going to ask you something. You ready? I'm ready. Domestic <laughs> violence has a lot of components. Mm -hmm. People think. They, that it only happens when it's physical, right? They think, like, oh, I saw the black eye. Like if a man's beating you, then that's domestic violence. But you and I both know 
It is way more than that. And sometimes the physical comes way later. Sometimes it comes way later. Mm -hmm. So it could be emotional, mental, psychological, sexual. It can be spiritual. It can be financial abuse. And of course, physical. So we want to take some time to hear the story of your abuse. Mm -hmm. I know we, we want to hit, you know, how you say hit the highlight. I hate saying it, hit the highlights. Because <laughs> it sounds terrible, right? But we want to hear your story of abuse and survival. And which components for you were the most significant in the types of abuse you experienced? Yes. And yes. thank you so much for addressing the different types of abuse. Because I will even say for myself, I just thought it was physical. I had no idea that there were so many different components. And I, I believe had I known that, maybe I would have seen that a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. But in my head, it was, it was always physical. Um, yep. But for me personally, it was physical. However, it started with that emotional, mental, just sort of those, um, you know, you kind of think of them as an argument at first, like, oh, yep. we're just arguing. But then they would sort of escalate and start screaming and yelling. And then it would be talking down to me, letting me know that I'm not worth it. I, you know, just sort of you, you start to kind of feel like, like nothing. And those are just words, you know? Mm, mm. Um, and, you know, you and I were talking, people say sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Not Biggest true. lie ever told. <laughs> not true. Not at true. All. Um, and so with mine, it definitely, for me personally, and everyone's story is different. And I definitely yes. want to acknowledge that right here. Our stories are different yet connected. Yep. Um, yes. But really for me, it started with that emotional and the just sort of verbal abuse. And then it escalated to the physical. And where'd you meet him? I met him originally my very first week of college. Yeah, so, this very You're a freshman. What do you know, I'm a right? Freshman. I was the first person um, in my family to go out of state for college um, or at the University of Georgia. I'm from Arkansas. I went to the University of Georgia. And um, so it's my first week out of state. You know, here I am. And I met him my first yep. week of college. Isn't it um, something? And I'm sure he was amazing, right? Oh, in the beginning. Yeah. They all are. They're all phenomenal. I'm handsome. <laughs> you, <know. laughs> you remember, you like, he was cute. <laughs> yeah. and, and April, I definitely want to acknowledge this comment right here too, is the one day you look in the mirror and you no longer see yourself. Um, I, I definitely want to acknowledge that too, because yeah. yes, like that's, you do. That that's so exactly true. it. You, you know what, and this is what you said, it's kind of like you, you were a certain person when you met them, they, and I, I, April, I know, you know, you were a certain person. And when you met them, they loved all those things about you. You were smart. You were, you know, um, outgoing, you were courageous. You were all these things and they make big, a big deal of you being beautiful and whatever those things are. Right. And then at some point, those things are then used against you later and you start to make yourself smaller Mm -hmm. to allow them to either keep the drama, just keep the drama down. Like if I just make myself smaller I keep the drama down, but also he can be bigger. He can be whatever he's trying to be. I just don't want to deal with it. And I just don't, I'm not, you know, if you're not a high conflict personality or if you are very empathetic, I'm going to guess you are an empath too, Hannah K. I am. If you're an empath, <laughs> these guys know it. They seek out these kinds of people. They seek out very, I'm, I bet you you're super responsible too. People <laughs> who are very responsible. I'm telling you, there's like a thing they, they, they know. They have kind of got this dialed in. Ladies, guys, listen, next week I have a guy on my show. Or else I have a male domestic violence survivor coming on my show next week. So that's a whole other thing. So that's why I always try to talk to both audiences. Guys, girls, there's a personality type that these abusers are. And there's a personality type that they're looking for to abuse. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. So anyway, all right, let's keep going. So thank you, April because I looked back and I was no longer myself. And that was everything from my weight to the things I enjoyed to who I spoke to and my family and my friend circle got very, very small. Oh, just don't get me started. Hey, <laughs> hi lady, Charlotte checking in, thank you. All right, great enlightenment. Okay, oh wait a minute. Don't forget financially stable and financially stable was another piece. So the two of us both experienced financial abuse absolutely. 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, all right, I want you to think back, Hannah Kay. Take it all the way back, okay? Think back to when you were in it. You were going through. And I know you were being secretive because I did the same thing. Most of us do because we're trying to figure out, is this just like a blip in the radar or is this like going to be the whole trip, right? So, so <laughs> right. Think, right. Thinking back to the beginning of the relationship, what are some of your boundaries? Like if you could think specifically that you now see that he pushed, mm -hmm. what were the, basically I'm asking you, what were those yellow and even slightly pinkish reddish flags, right? Mm -hmm. That you overlooked. What were some of those? Yeah, well, and and I want to also tie this back. Well, okay, let me answer your questions. <laughs> I mean, it really was sort of looking back, listening to those words that were being said to me at first and, and not understanding that people don't speak to each other that way. You know, I right. mean, it, it really does kind of come down to even in the beginning when it just starts with, okay, this negative talk, and then it turns into yelling, and then it escalates and escalates. Well, if I would have noticed in the beginning that people don't speak to each other like that. Like that. Um, not at all. And, and I do want to bring this up at this point right now, too, because one of the things that you and I spoke about, and this is what went through my head all of the time, was that I always have heard, I still hear it every day, and I try to correct it when I hear it, every couple fights. Every Oof. couple, that's what I, you know, that's sort of what, so. Every couple more, fights. Right. Hard stop, no. Every couple no. may disagree and every couple does disagree at some point. Mm -hmm. If you're agreeing 100% all the time, no, eh, it's probably not right. But they don't fight. There is a way to communicate with each other even if you disagree. And it Thank is you. just like, you know, so hearing that, hearing that every couple fights, it really sits with you. And it's sort of like, well, I, I understand my relationship here. And so if every couple fights, if I leave this, does that mean that I'm going to go to another relationship just like that? Well, I have this one under control, you know, All like right. I can handle I'll it. just stay here. Handle this. Yeah, that is not true. If, if yes. I hear that again, you know, every couple disagrees. Yes. Every couple does not fight. Um, you know what it is, Hannah Kay? It's the, it's the distortion or the um, misinterpretation. First of all, no one should say that. It's kind of like the sticks and stones may break your bones and words will never hurt you. That's a, that's a hardcore lie. <laughs> but every couple fights that word. We know what a fight looks like. We have all watched Meriwether versus whoever. We have all watched a fight. Most of us have been in fights. I can tell you right now, born and raised in Philly, I've fought. Okay. <laughs> so we know what a fight is. When you say that in relation to an intimate partner, someone you love or who claims loves you, you are normalizing abnormal behavior. Are y'all hearing me? You are normalizing abnormal behavior when you say every couple fights. To Hannah Kay's point, point, there are disagreements. There may even be arguments. They might even be kind of heated. But there is a difference between disrespect and abuse versus arguments and uh, disagreements. Mm -hmm. Do not normalize abnormal behavior. I tell people red flags, full stop. When you see any sign of physical aggression, full stop. When you are called out of your name, it is a full stop. It doesn't mean like, oh, well, he didn't really mean to say it that way. Yellow flags, comparing you to the ex. Was she used to this? And, oh, what'd you just say? Pay attention to the yellow flags. Don't let those slide either. That was actually my experience getting compared mm -hmm. to the ex. Who's actually on this call right now? <laughs> but she's awesome. So to an extent, whatever. So, so but... And the thing too is that you know saying every couple fights and and all of this and it's sort of um i'm so sorry i totally just lost what i was gonna you're say fine, you're fine. Coming through. um but it it really does and it'll come back to me i promise i just totally lost my thought you're fine. but you're fine. Um, i will but definitely you see, get back. but every couple does not fight to destroy the other that's a difference too oh hold mm. on we got one big one here what is this one? Ooh. oh mm. wow Mm, wow. I'm just going, let me roll my neck on that one. Mm -hmm. I am currently in the process of leaving a 12 year domestic violence relationship mm -hmm. with a narcissistic man. I'm just going to say a few things really quickly. Mm -hmm. 
12 years is a long time, baby. And I can only imagine all that you've seen and experienced. I, I pray, I pray. Okay, wait, let me just add the next part of the comment because that mm -hmm. was important. Mm -hmm. And I was getting ready to say to you, I pray that you have a full-fledged safety plan. And I don't just mean the first plan, I mean the B and C backup plans. I don't know if there are children involved. I would love to talk to you. Um, I would love to talk to you. I'm not a crisis person, but I understand the crisis situation. And I just want to say a few things to you. So after this show, if you could please send me a message or call me at 855-WE-SURVIVE, 855-WE-SURVIVE. I'm scared for you too, but we're not going to operate in fear because fear is a liar and fear is what keeps us there. Okay. Yes, All right. That's, that's a whole so show. Proud of you for leaving. leaving. So proud of you. So proud of you. We got to make that happen safely because mm. people are quick to tell, why don't she just leave? Why don't she just leave? You got people have no idea what it takes, do they? And, and that was sort of my my thought that I lost for a brief minute because I saw some things and, and I'm so, so proud of you um, yep. for leaving. And a lot of times, um, you know, we kind of think, well, maybe I can fix it. Maybe this is just a, a, a one time or, well, you know, a few times things like maybe I can fix the these arguments. And if mm -hmm. I can change him for next time or her. Change him or her. And, and that's not true. We can't change them as much as we think we can. Um, and, and a lot of times that's another reason why people, why people stay is they think like, maybe this is just a one time or few times thing. And then you notice that it's a pattern and then it's sort of like, oh, I'm in too deep and that kind of thing. There's so, so, so many reasons um, people think, on the, if you're on the outside, like, why don't you just leave? It's so easy to just leave. Oh, my God. So, so many, so many reasons why people don't just leave. And we hit on some of them earlier. Maybe they are, you know, financially constrained to that person. That person has financially abused them. And so they don't have a way to get out. Maybe their abuser has isolated them so much that they now don't have anyone to reach out to. There are so many reasons, and every story is different. And, and let me add, let me get, let me keep it really real, right? Because we're getting a little deep now. We're getting some personal stuff coming through here. I know that I know the experience of being told, "Bitch, you're gonna die." I know mm -hmm. that experience. I know what that's like. These guys and even women, they they don't just threaten. Sometimes they really get so close to the point of doing something to you that lets you know, "I will kill you. I will hurt you. Not just you." your dog. I'll take the kids. You do that. I'll do this and that. Those threats come. And it comes a point when you fear that. I tell people all the time, what keeps that cycle going? Three things, love, hope, and fear. Love, hope, and fear. I'm going to say it one more time. Love, hope, and fear are the three things that keep that cycle of abuse going. So don't just think somebody can walk away. Sometimes knives have already been put to through. Sometimes strangulation, strangulation has already occurred. People have been, as they say, choked out. I hate saying that word. You've been choked out at times, blacked out. This stuff is real. So saying some, they will come for you. They will find you. This stuff is no joke. Just leave is not just leave. No. It's called just live. I want to just live. Mm -hmm. So you have to leave safely. Oh, don't get me started. I can go for that for days. So anyway, <laughs> um, you got so much to say. This is important. I want to get to it. So let me ask you something. When you think back, Hannah Kay, because, you know, we talked about you. You've got a great background. You've got a great story. You're an amazing woman that's doing and has done amazing things. Where was everybody when this was going on? Right. Where were your support system? You've got friends. You've got family. I know enough to know that. Right. Was it colleagues? Where were all those people? What was going on? when everything was happening, what role did they play? Yeah, and you know, I did such a good job about keeping it behind closed doors. No one knew what was happening behind closed doors. I didn't have physical marks on me or anything. Um, that doesn't mean that physical abuse didn't happen previously because it, it did. Correct. But I nobody saw it. You know, it, it yep. wasn't where anyone could see it. Um, and so no one knew 
you know, to, that I needed help essentially. But I yeah. will tell you that what kept me going and all of that was even just if I could just talk to a friend, just talk to someone. And even though I wasn't saying what was going on, mm -hmm. you know, I may kind of not, I don't even know if I was dropping hints, but just talking to them and letting, having them listen to whatever I had to say, honestly, at that time was the best thing that mm -hmm. could happen for me because I wasn't at a place where I wanted to let anybody know what was happening, but I wanted to talk to somebody. Right. And so even just having them just take the time, take a minute and listen to whatever I want, needed and wanted to say at that time. Mm, um, it, and, oh, I'm yeah. so glad. I'm so glad because, and it's funny because we, we both talk about hiding it. Mm -hmm. And what does the statistic tell us? Now, I know depending on which source you go to and what the wording is, you hear slight different things, but you'll hear anything from one in four women to one in three women. You'll hear one of the two experience domestic violence in her lifetime. So what does that tell you? I don't know how many people were working where you were working with Sheryl Sandberg, but I know how many people work at Daimler, a lot. And if that statistic is true, and I know it, I actually think it's worse because of what's not reported. Mm -hmm. But if that, let's go with that one in four women. So if I go like that, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, I am very likely to hit on a coworker, colleague who has been through it. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it sometimes like, gosh, if I just would have said something sooner, maybe I could have gotten that word that I needed or that encouragement I needed to say, first of all, that's your house. Second of all, <laughs> that's your money. We got to get you up out of that, right? Like you are so much better than that. My cousin calls me sunshine. She says I'm her sunshine. I lost all my sunshine. I lost all my sunshine in that process. But I would say this right now. You see this smile? It's back, baby. It's yes. back. And yours is too. And okay, I just, oh, first of all, you're just a joy. You got sunshine on your face too. You're just a joy. And I'm just so glad that you are, you and I are both at this place at the same time that Absolutely. we even get a chance to be in each other's space and do this Absolutely. together. Yes. And this is one thing we actually didn't talk about, but I don't know if you've experienced this, but I have had people say to me after they learn about my story and, and all of that, like, well, you're so happy. And I'm what? Like, do I not deserve it's because he's gone? Happy? Cause his behind is gone. That's what I'm like, like, do I not deserve, can I not be happy? Like, I mean that I I get that so often, and and I do acknowledge that I understand where people are are coming from when they're saying yeah. that. I do understand that, but I mean, you know, that's one reason I do show I am happy. I want people yes. to know that this right here can happen because can I will happen. tell you, and I still will never ever ever forget this. This was after I'd already decided to to leave. And I was just, I can't even tell you, I was crying and crying so, so much. I remember being on my couch. I was at the lowest of my low. I took mm. out my cell phone. I took a selfie and I said, remember this day because Ooh. it will get better. And I want to know and remember that like, this was the lowest of my low and compare that to today. And like, I, I didn't imagine this during that day but you i will tell you it. it was i didn't i never thought that i would be where i am and i want people to see this and know that even those on here right now like there is hope you can yep. get out of this on the other side and we are here for you 1000 percent you can break free you yes. are not alone right one thousand percent. Listen, I oh my gosh. So there is a comment in here that's pretty long. So I want to bring it up because when people type a comment, I'm one of those people that I want to respect these words because that takes time, effort, and Absolutely. thought and emotion. Yes. So Autumn says, Yes, you must believe what they are saying. So I think she's talking back to the, the other mm -hmm. person that was on there. Having a plan is great. Make sure you have several backup plans. Oh, I meant that. The B plan, the C plan. Yes. When you leave, cut off. All those folks who stood there supporting your abuser. Woo! 
I don't know how to say amen. I don't know how many ways I can say amen to that. If children are involved, it's okay to keep the children safe and separated from the other parent. Now, I know that children do complicate things because I'm going to say one quick thing about that. If you had a child in a state where there's a birth certificate for that child in that state, the state has jurisdiction over that child. That is a fact. So you do have to be very careful. It is it is better to try to get a protection order, like an emergency like protection order, which involves the children, so that you're not seen as taking the children out of state inappropriately and being forced to bring them back. So there are things that we should talk about. I know I'm saying this quickly on here, and I'm not, it's not legal advice, but I'm just giving a warning that when children are involved, it does get complicated because they technically, the state they're in, if you want to leave it, the state has jurisdiction. So you got to be careful with how you approach that. So those emergency restraining orders or emergency custody orders can be very, very important. All right. April shouted this out. I'm going to say this to you too, Hannah Kay. You became a diamond. You became a diamond as well. All right. So what else? Let's see what we got here. I'm going to be just like y'all when I grow up. Oh, girl, don't do that. There you go, babe. <laughs> you will. You will get out. You will come through. You are. Yes. Yes. Believe that. Please let us be that proof. Yes. Yes. But listen, listen. So so I'm going to say something to you. Hmm. The name is Anaya. I think the name is Anaya. Am I saying that right? Anaya, forgive me. I'm a name person. I'm Angelique and people say it wrong all the time. So I pray I say your name correctly. But our stories are always different. I haven't even gotten to the point where we're going to ask Hannah Kay what made her jump because we're about to get to that. We got a, a few other things to talk. We've been talking longer than I thought a little bit. But I want to <laughs> say this. You have got to make a plan based on your specific situation. Because whereas today, you know, I feel I have a protection order that is longstanding until my daughter's 18. So come for me if you want to, right? Come for me if you want to. I got a longstanding protection order and I'm going to use it every way possible. Some people have had a chance to move to a whole nother state, get so far away that their abuser is not even a concern for them because they figured out how to get away from them completely. But I just to you, be very careful because we have to make sure that you're getting away is truly safe getting away because I have no idea if he's the kindness. There are some abusers, I call them super cowards. The super cowards, they're all cowards, but there are some abusers I call super cowards that just don't even want to go to jail. I, 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 let me let me hide and run because I don't want to go to jail. I don't want the cops to get me. But there are some abusers that be like, they can come for me all they want. I'm going to kill you before they show up. Some of them do not care. So we have to be very careful. And that's why I'm just stressing this, okay? We want you out. We want you safely out. All right. So um, all right, let me keep going. I'll try to come back to some of these comments. All right. So real quick, Hannah K owns a company. It's called Thread Talk. I have the mug to prove it. <clears throat> and I'm so proud. We haven't even gotten to that part. But um, people tend to say, well, couldn't you just have loved your abuser through it? Right. Can you just love them through it? Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we, we tried that. That's that didn't work. We, we tried that. OK, so here we go. You ready? Right. What, what was the exit like? Meaning, what happened that made you decide that it was at? Hold on, y'all. Wait a minute. If you haven't shared this yet, share it right now because it's getting real and there's a message at the end you have to hear. All right. So what happened that made you decide, Hannah Kay, that it was time to jump? Like how long, how many times did it take for you to leave? But what was that situation that said, I got to go? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I will tell you too, for me, I, this wasn't the first time as you know, I mentioned earlier and I just never, I, I was afraid to leave because I thought I was going to be judged. I thought I was going to be stigmatized. I thought I, you know, having the big divorcee on top of my forehead for all to see. And then it just would open up the conversation. Well, I yeah. can tell you the, the date, I will always remember this. It was Super Bowl Sunday, 2014. Mm. And again, this wasn't the first time that things got physical, but it was the absolute worst. And when I say worst, earlier I had mentioned that nobody could see any markings previously. Yeah. There was now no hiding the markings. Mm. I was black and blue. My you couldn't see my ribs because I would wear a shirt, but, you know, totally bruised, just all black and blue. There was no hiding this. 
And so I called my neighbors who came over. Um, they talked to me. They said, you have to go to a doctor. I will tell you, even at that moment, so we talk about when when to jump, even at that moment when I was black and blue and I couldn't hardly move, I didn't want to go to a doctor because I knew that doctors have to report abusers. Yes. And I wasn't in that mindset to, to want this to come out, right? Like, and my friend said, no, absolutely. Like, we're taking you to the doctor. Like, you have mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. The words that my doctor said were, had one of those hits, so it was multiple hits, had one of those hits been slightly harder or to the right, and keep in mind a bunch of blows happening right here, um, that mm. I could be in a coma, but I also could have died. And those words will ring in my head mm. every day, and it was at that moment that I knew that I had to get out or there may not be a next time. It was so like so close. And that was the moment that I knew I had to go. And you know, I, I sit here and I'm like, the audacity of him to think, or any of them to think that they have the right to try to reduce you to the point where you wouldn't even be alive, that you could be in a coma. Just, just, just the recklessness of it all. To do what exactly? To do what? What did he gain really? What was that all for? I, I can't stand any of them. <laughs> I can't stand any of them. And that's, any you know, also even with my story, again, other people may have other stories that right. don't get to the physical part. Right. But when you are in that physical piece, like, it one more slightly just one more time you never know when that you one more know. time is going to be the last you never know listen that's why we say it's time to jump mm -hmm. you do not if you don't jump soon enough like what if you would have stayed one more time mm -hmm. listen the statistic tells us Hannah K you would know the statistic says that on average so y'all know math average means there's numbers higher and there's numbers lower and they come together to make the average. On average, seven times it takes victims seven times to leave their abuser completely. Seven. Yes. Who knows? And that's the average. Some people get to eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 14 and whatever the numbers are, you might not make it out that 10th, 11th, 12th, 14 time. Mm -hmm. It's time to jump. All right. Who? You jumped. But your, I did. Story, your story did not end there. And that's, that's the beauty. Nice. That's the sunshine in your face. That's the sunshine. Your story didn't end there. So I want you to tell us about your journey to healing and what your life is like today. Yes. And let me tell you, it all comes together. Like everything is connected. It really does come together. And so I'll kind of you know, talk about this in circles here. And I hope I'm kind of you're okay. You're fine. Uh, okay. <laughs> and so basically now I'm, I'm here. I was working, as we mentioned earlier, I could not move now. I needed this time off of work. And so I, I was working um, with Cheryl Sandberg and she was one of the first people I called because I needed to take time off. I needed to um, reset, figure out what I was going to do. So I called, I let her know what had was going on. I asked for some time off work. Not only did my boss give me time off of work, but she offered me the opportunity to move clear across the country and work for her at Facebook headquarters in California. So I was in Georgia. I don't know if I mentioned that at the time. I was in Georgia when this okay. happened. Okay. And so I had the opportunity to move clear across the country and restart my life. And having that support. And one of the things um, I know we talked about too is why it's so important. If you are a boss, if you, you know, we all have bosses too, why it's so important to understand the need for this time off, the need for support, because that is the time that really matters the most. Absolutely. Um, and and so stop me if I'm going too far. No, but you're fine. Before I left California. So now I, I took the time I needed to go through, get the divorce finalized, do all of that. And I moved to California. Now, keep in mind, when I was married, we all think we're just going to be married 
one time. So I was in my dream home. We were going to have babies. We did not have children, um, but that was the plan, Um, you know? And so um, this, this is where my life was going to be. I had what I needed. Now I'm moving to California. I moved to California with two suitcases and I donated what was in my house before I left to the local domestic violence shelter. Um, because, you know, and that was, that was what I wanted to do. However, I didn't know anything about a domestic violence shelter before this. I had never really encountered one. I personally never used their services because I didn't understand. And so by donating and connecting with this domestic violence shelter, I learned that domestic violence shelters were not just this place with a cot on a concrete floor that people just went in and out, um, kind of like a jail. Like, you know, that's sort of what I had in my yeah, mind. That's your picture, right? It is. I'm like, I, I will be the first to say, like, I was in that camp of not understanding what a domestic violence shelter is. No, these are places that provide so much warmth and comfort and security. And not only that, they provide programs to help survivors get back on their feet. Mm-hmm. And wow. What a powerful place and powerful, Mm -hmm. amazing people who work there. So when I moved to California, I I kept that shelter in the back of my mind. I was always thinking about that shelter and I wanted to do something to help and give back to domestic violence shelter. That's where um, sort of we we jump into where I am today. Yes, and I can't wait to you tell us because to me, You've done more than just survive. You have. You've turned your pain, as we say, turned your pain into purpose. Mm -hmm. And that experience with that shelter led to what you started. So let's go ahead and talk about Thread Talk. Yay! My favorite topic. I love it. Your favorite topic. (laughs) Thread Talk. And let me tell you, Thread Talk is is the name of the company. Um, You can find us. I'm just going to say this in case I forget later, but threadtalk.com. You can also find us on social media at threadtalkstrong. Um, And I want to let everyone know because yes, we are a company and I'll I'll say a little bit more about the product, but we are a community. We Mm -hmm. are a community. You, You know, we're all connected again, going back to that connection. And so what I've done with Thread Talk is I started a company. I call it a for-profit, for-purpose company because I sell these. I don't know if you can see some of these back here, but these awesome blankets. Um, I have some hanging behind me here, but we sell blankets. And 10% of all of the proceeds from our blankets and our mugs and different items that we have are donated back to domestic violence shelters. And people say, why blankets? Why, what's a, what's a blanket have to do with it? Right. Lots of things. One, let me tell you how many days and hours and times I spent wrapped up in a blanket, crying myself, thinking I wasn't going to get back up. That picture I have, mm -hmm, have a blanket. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and so there's just something about being wrapped up in a blanket, that cozy, soft, like comforting feeling. Totally agree. When I donated to the domestic violence shelter, I learned that blankets and linens were some of the most requested items in shelters. And again, something so comforting about that, providing blankets. But then I did more research. I started not only talking to that shelter, I talked to shelters all across the United States. I personally went and visited them, spoke to survivors, met with the shelters. And I learned that yes, blankets and linens are some of the most requested items, but they need so many other things and every shelter is different. And so some may just need something like cleaning supplies, kitchen items, deodorant, um, anything like that. And so our 10%, we donate to an existing nonprofit called domesticshelters.org that is a database of all shelters and programs and they can, the shelters personally can go in and say what their items are that they need at that time. So yes. 10% of our proceeds are donated to fund those specific items that they need. And it's and through so, domesticshelters.org. So the yes. money goes and they disperse it where it needs to go. 
Yes, okay, exactly. I got it. And, Love and, it. and we do it based on the region. So I work very closely with domesticshelters.org. And also I go, I visit shelters. And so sometimes we have partnerships with particular shelters. And even though we donate through domesticshelters.org, we donate the items. And for those here in Charlotte, I'm so excited to let you know um, that with Thread Talk, um, so there are a couple of shelters here, and I, I know people are from all over, they may not know these, but Safe Alliance and Turning yes. Point, if you are yes. in this area. Um, and so we actually, Thread Talk partnered with Lisa Mattress, and we donated um, brand new mattresses, pillows, um, all deodorant. I think we even did juice boxes and lotions, like all of these items, brand new, completely filled, Safe Alliance and Turning Point, and you know, just right here in our backyard. And that's just a small thing that we have been able to do for so many shelters across the country. And it's because we have this community just from you know a blanket right here that it just you know, and those other people who have purchased the blankets or who have given the blankets are reminded that they're not alone either. When you're wrapped up in that blanket, you think of the person who gave it to you. And with Thread Talk, you think of the company and what it's behind and what people are doing. And so that's what we're all about right now. Do y'all see why I brought her on this show? <laughs> First of all, even when I, I am a blanket person, I swear I have like five throw blankets in here. Like I love them, all colors also. I love blankets. And so just what you're talking about, like even like you said, when you're sad, you cover yourself. When you I just love them. I just want to tell you, because even as you're saying it to I knew this, but even even as you're saying it again to me right now, and I'm watching the comments come up, and I just keep trying to click on them so you get to see them. This last one, when you're homeless, escaping your abuser, blankets help mm -hmm. you. Yeah, I mean, it does. It helps you survive the impact. Wow. And thank you and for so, that. And let me just tell you, Midori, Midori is the, she's the second, she was my second show. She's a survivor. Been through, she's domestic violence speakers bureau, all that. When I tell you that we are right here, mm -hmm. we are here. So thank you, Midori. Yes. Um, so it, listen, can, so if people go to threadtalk.com, can they buy a blanket right there? Yes, threadtalk.com. Okay. And so I want to also make clear two, a couple of things. One, okay. um, when you purchase a blanket, you are getting the blanket for yourself. A lot of people okay. um, may think that you're purchasing a blanket to be donated. No, that blanket is for you or if you want to give it as a gift. We're a big gifting company. People you know, love giving our blankets as right. gifts. Um, but that's the physical item, product that you are getting. And then we donate the 10% of the proceeds back. There's also a place on our website where you can go and just donate directly. Okay. Um, so if you don't want a product, you can go donate directly. Our website is threadtalk.com. And um, that's where you can find us. And also, again, social media at Thread Talk Strong. Thread Talk Strong. I like that, at Thread Talk Strong. So Maduri asks, can you get the blanket customized? So we don't have the blanket customized. All of our blankets, which I actually did not mention, which I very well should mention right now, we have a standard blankets. Right now we have 11 blankets. We have large oversized blankets and small blankets, but we give them names. So yes. we give them names of confidence, love, oh. serenity, hope, and wonder. We also have resilience and happiness and strength. So those are the names of our blankets. Um, so so our, our blankets are set, what we have here. Um, we do work with folks if you're interested in, um, we're, we hope to bring this in the very near future. Yeah. We do work one off. It's not on our website currently about getting them embroidered or anything like that. We do offer that. Um, it's just, you know, for your live folks right now, we'll let them <laughs> in on our little secret right now. <laughs> So you can email us at hello at threadtalk.com if you're interested in a customized blanket. And just for your listeners, Angelique, we will uh, work with them in advance. I love um, it. Hannah Kay, what if they wanted to, what if they just liked you so much and they wanted to get in touch with you specifically? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. You can reach me directly on our website. Um, and, and there's a place that you can go in and get a message, and I will see those personally as well. Yes. 
Um, So please, please, please contact me through my website because I know that seems weird, but I promise I I'm here for everyone. Um, I, I will get those as well. And I actually say that because sometimes as we know, our inboxes get crazy. And so, (laughs) (laughs) so when I know it comes through threadtalk.com, that is my priority right there. My priority is to check those. Oh my gosh. So, so my girl, Crystal is on here. This is, she, she on her on Facebook is clearly glass where it is Crystal. She said, I love her energy. <laughs> I Dory say, I don't know what she said. Yay too, but I'm saying it too. Yay. Whatever, <laughs> whatever it was for, I'm saying it too. Listen, my, I love my people. Um, so, oh my gosh, man, okay, you have just, the things you're talking about, I mean, to me, it is very easy to just do something to say you've done it. People do this all the time. But you have a clear purpose. You said it. You, you. What did you say about? You said it's for profit, for purpose, right? For profit, for purpose. I love that, and I know exactly what that means to you. I know what it means to you. I have to say thank you to you, because you are doing something like I never had the experience of being in a shelter. Let me just say that I know people who have, mm-hmm. and I've never been in the shelter, so I don't know what it's like. I have volunteered at a shelter to do what you were talking about: stocking, pulling out the the uh, donations, and putting them on the shelves to provide it to the women or children or who were in the shelter. And just, I was telling you before, I said, you know, it's to think that, you know, as you're stocking the shelves, something is out. And you're like, gosh, like they don't have this item. That's a shame. Like I use that all the time. If, if I went to my closet and I, or my cabinet or my whatever and didn't have that item, I just run to Walmart and go pick it up myself or pick it up at Walgreens or whatever. They can't necessarily do that. It is so important to make sure the shelters have what they need. And I just thank you for just being like this one thing. I can't fix the whole, I can't fix everything, but I can give them something that keeps them warm and makes them feel secure. And so I love the themed blankets. I love the, I just, the whole thing, like I couldn't wait to get you on my, (laughs) cause I think what you're doing is so special. It's so, it's just so special. So thank you. Do y'all have any more questions? Oh wait, hold on, hold on. Midori has some questions. Did you all help with the DB? Oh, she's asking about the mural. Here we go. Tell them about it. Tell them. <laughs> so yes, absolutely. That was that was all us with Thread Talk. Um, we partnered with Parks and Rec and the City of Charlotte. And um, absolutely, yes. And Angelique is one of our amazing survivors who lent her voice to our mural. So for those of you in Charlotte who who don't know what we're talking about here, um, so here at Thread Talk, we wanted to display the words of survival and what words meant to survivors, not only for the survivors, but also, again, for those who may look at other survivors as I can get through. I We want to provide hope for folks. And so yes. um, we reached out, got um, survivor quotes. Angelique was one of our survivor quotes. Uh-huh. Created a mural in um, what Parks and Rec, Angelique, you may not know this, Parks and Rec told us it was the most highly trafficked, uh, traffic, yeah. sorry, um, <laughs> pedestrian area in Charlotte because it's under a bridge. And so that's, we wanted to reach the most eyes. If I, if I try to show this picture, it's probably not gonna work, but let me see. So it's hard to see it, but the mural has a bunch of quotes on it. It says survivors. And I'm gonna tell you guys what my quote was. My quote was, freedom is being you without anyone's permission. Mm. That was my quote that got up there. Ah, this is yes. so awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, um, let me see. Yes, I recall you asking the speakers bureau to submit quotes. Yes, you yes. did. Yes, that was, oh, that was me. <laughs> Look at that. See how it all comes full circle, Midori. I just love this. I love it. So listen, I, I could talk to you all night, beautiful. You know I could talk to you all night. Same. I do want to ask you something. Mm-hmm. So, and you told me something in particular but I'm just going to let you flow on this one because I think I'll have something. You'll have something. People on here have something. When you think about your whole experience, the people you've come across who are survivors and victims to the work that you're doing today, to the people who helped you along the way, when you just take it all in and you got this moment right here, this platform, what final thoughts would you like to share with who's ever watching now 
and who you know is going to watch this recording later? What do they need to hear, know, think, whatever from you? Yes. And you know, I love it so much. I printed on our mug as well right here. Once again, that you are strong. You are loved. You are not alone is what I want everyone to know. Um, and it, and I mean that for sure, because I thought also, again, I didn't know anyone who was going through this. I didn't think, you know, I could get out. You are not alone. We are here to support you. You are loved. But let me say on the flip side too, maybe you're not going through this or maybe you don't understand. Be those ears. Listen, listen. It may not even be someone coming straight out and saying, hey, do you know what's happening behind closed doors? Right. But just being that ear and listening to them may be you, them saying something that really entitle or encourage them to get out. Yes. Oh my gosh. I, I appreciate you because that, yeah, she's Midori wrote a note. That's right. You're worthy. Don't believe the lie. Like we, there are so many things that you are told in the beginning of a relationship and it's, you're amazing. You're phenomenal. You're this, you're that. And as time progresses, if you understand the cycle of abuse, it is all designed to, for that person to get complete and total power and control over every aspect of you. Breaking free, jumping is not easy. But we sit here talking and having this conversation and sharing our message because we want people to know it is possible. Midori is on here because she wants you to know it is possible. And I, I know it's not easy, but nothing worth having is easy. Nothing worth having and nothing is more worth having than your freedom nothing. So taking the time, I'm working with a lady right now that's trying to figure out how to get out and I'm going to talk to her soon. And we've got a conversation happening on Monday, mm -hmm. but it is just, it's so much to carry, but to your point, you are strong. And I'm going to add a part to that. You are stronger than, you know, mm. you're stronger than, you know, because somebody has been in your ear telling you that you're nothing so that you wouldn't even think you have the strength or the power to walk away. Let me tell you how much you were before you even met that fool. You were way more. They tried to bring you here, but you have got to find that thing that reminds you. I've got a quote, <laughs> my favorite quote. She remembered who she was and the game changed. That's my favorite. Yes. <laughs> she remembered who she was and the game changed. That's me all day. <laughs> yes. What you say? You are strong. You are loved and you are not alone. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know if you guys have any last minute thoughts. Um, no, but your life has so much value. That's why they try to suck it out of you. Correct. It has so much value. You have so much to do. You have so much to contribute to this world, society, uh, all these things. And so I am just grateful for you. This. Oh, I'm getting more comments. Hold on. Hold on. Amen. All it takes is a reminder. It takes a reminder. So anything else you want to share, Hannah K, before we sign off? I know it's about quarter after. We have had great participation. I really, really appreciate anyone who's commented. Anything else you just want to say? Yes. No, I just want to, you know, let everyone know on here. Thank you so much. And thank you for being strong and sharing those stories as well in the comments. Because even just saying that right there, like, that took courage. I know even just to say that out loud in the, in the beginning stages, um, yes. very proud of all of you, all of you that have gone and gotten out and can be that example for others who are, who are going through this now. Um, and so thank you to all of your listeners. Thank you, Angelique, for having oh, me here and for giving me the opportunity to share my story and talk about Thread Talk as well. And let me just say this. I know sometimes, just listen, my, one of my closest friends, she was like, there was a point when your situation was too much for me, Angelique. Like mm -hmm. I, I had to pull away because it was too much for me to even help. So if you're in that situation where you know someone or you don't know anybody necessarily right now, but you're trying to figure out how to contribute to this very crazy thing that's happening in this world called domestic violence, thread talk is a way. It's simply you, a transaction of buying a blanket or buying a mug, and you already know because this is good people, this woman is good people, that money is going where she said it's going. 
and is going to help people who are in shelters who need certain things and they know exactly what they, what those needs are. So if it's nothing but buying a blanket, supporting through Thread Talk, do that. I trust this woman and I trust the work that she's doing and I appreciate all that you've done, Hannah Kay. Thank you are you. just awesome. <laughs> yeah, at some point you better invite me to come visit and hang out because yeah, yes, the yes. pandemic is over. No, it's not. <laughs> People in the yes. Carolina seem to think so, don't they? They act like it's over. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yes, this is not the last you will see the two of us together. Don't worry. The pandemic may have delayed it a little bit, but we're coming strong. Oh my gosh, you are phenomenal. So, all right, everybody, we are about to sign off. Hold on, what does that say? Hey, you may walk with a limp, but you are freely walking. That's the infamous, you are bit, not broken, right? That's that concept. <laughs> All right, so listen, we're going to sign off. It's been a great night. Thank you so much. If you have not shared this, if you have not tagged somebody in it, I know you know somebody this message was for. You can't tell me. Y'all tag and y'all share all the time. Don't act like you can't tag and share this. <laughs> so so I don't care if it's a man, a woman, if you share it to a group, if you share it to your own page, just share it, tag people in it, do whatever, because these messages need to be heard. I thank you all. It is 817. I'm going to let you go. Hannah Kay, you have a beautiful night. I will talk to you again. And I actually need to buy a blanket. I need to go ahead and do that. I got this mug. But I need a blanket because I'm a blanket lover. All right, y'all. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. See you guys. Talk to you soon. Talk to you next week.